Red Army rings around the vitality. This is it. It's Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest, live on BBC Radio Solent, and we're underway. If you miss the menu, if you like, a Bournemouth win, and they're back in the Premier League in a couple of hours' time. A draw means a draw on Saturday would get them up. A Nottingham Forest win puts them in pole position to complete the job on Saturday. I'll give you the Forest team in full in just a second. The ball's on the halfway line. Cherries, red and black stripes, black shorts and socks. Forest, a luminous yellow mainly with orange half shirts at the front as the Cherries prepare to take this uh, free kick along the halfway line. There's already a bit of early chest there as Forrest tried to cut off Jefferson Lerma's ball forward. It's back to Kelly on this near side. Out John Zamora. Down the left side looking for Billing already. There's a bit of a tug back going on between Worrell and Anthony off the ball. Then Billing's taken an arm in the face, which has been spotted by referee Atwell. Let's give you the Forest team. Their goalkeeper is Brees Samba. The back three, Scott McKenna, Worrell and Cook. Spence, Garner, Yates and Colback and Zinconado behind Johnson and Surridge. Cherry's free kick just over the halfway line down this left-hand side. John Williams staring at the team sheet. You're going to need your glasses on, Willow, to see that team sheet. No doubt, it's in 10-point font. Away to our right, Mark Travers is in blue this afternoon by virtue of Nottingham Forest playing in yellow. And the Cherry's just able to get their foot on the ball with Nat Phillips up to the halfway line. Long diagonal ball out to the left, looking for Jaden Anthony. That'll be cushioned back to Joe Worrell. To the Forest keeper, Bree Samba, who more cricket than football, isn't he, Willow? He's all in white. Yes, he is. And I'm just looking at this left-hand side of the pitch because that's where all the intrigue is going to be for me. You know, our two lads are down hammered duo, as you call them getting up and down against the wing back we'll have to see how that pans out ball over on the far side at the moment Nottingham Forest fans again I don't know how many they could have bought if the tickets were unlimited but certainly the 1400 who are packed in over on the far side we all feel like they're the lucky ones if the result goes their way as Kelly looks for the big switch to try and turn Joe Worrell around it's applauded by Scott Parker even though it sails out of play beyond Jay Nassim yeah I don't, I don't mind trying to get up the pitch early on I can see the sense in that and why the lads try to do it you know just get them turned around get them running back towards their own goal and it's a bit of play for us at their own game, Willow, isn't it? Because they like to get the ball forward very quickly to Johnson and Surridge. As Surridge flicks it on towards Johnson, but it's picked up by Phillips halfway inside the Bournemouth half of the field. And Adam Smith will bring it away over on the right-hand side. One of those who has a wealth of Premier League experience on the far side. Ryan Christie on the ball a moment ago, of course. He's got plenty of Scottish Premier League experience, but not in the English Premier League. Another one looking to fulfil a career ambition as it goes back to Mark Travers with a fresh, sharp haircut in the Cherries' goal. Billing heads it on the halfway line. Forward comes Lewis Cook to power it forward, but it's picked off by Spence. Then Anthony goes in bravely around the centre circle. Lerma looks for Solanke, who's got a bit of space here. Lost it under his feet, but still going. Solanke left corner of the area. Across comes Steve Cook. Solanke onto his right foot. Cook in with the tackle. The shot from Billing, right across goal. He slipped as he took it, and Samba went down to his left to palm it clear. Not quite away yet. Over to the right-hand side, and Christie, right side of the penalty area. That was a danger for Nottingham Forest there. Steve Cook with the intervention initially. It's back out to Lerma on the right-hand side. Billing on the byline. Shadowed all the way over on that far side. And at the moment, as Yates puts the challenge in, the decision goes to Cherry's way by the corner flag for a throw. Yeah, he just slipped as he took the shot, but Samuel was good. He'd done well. He got down with his left hand just to flick it round the corner. Three and a half gone on BBC Radio Solon. If you're just tuning in, you hadn't realised it was a seven o'clock kickoff. Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil. The biggest game in world football this evening. We're not talking about any Champions League semi-finals. Over in the far corner, Cherry's still working it for a flag kick, and Lerma, unfortunately, has run it out of play, so it'll be a goal kick to Nottingham Forest away to our left. Yeah, just tried to get a little snick off it there, Jefferson, but out for the goal kick. Forest come out and play. Ball up to the halfway line. It's missed by Lloyd Kelly, and here's the dangerous Brennan Johnson. Kelly had a little feel back at him there. Kelly charging down the right side of the box. It was a very physical challenge on Johnson. Referee Atwell waves away for his protest and so it has to go down it's good defending from Kelly yeah I think he just put his arm across him at the right time so that kid is caught by Steve Cook that won't be the first or last time uh, Scott Parker was running down the touchline there he was stopped from moving any further by the fourth official but Parker protesting he was only going to get the ball Cook for a quick restart Cook he knew exactly what he was doing there no way he was going past 
I'm not so confident in the refereeing. I haven't been in this season in the championship, but I'm confident this evening Stuart Atwell is one of the very best men that we could have in charge for this game. The FIFA official, as I said, he did the Liverpool victory in the Carabao Cup final at Wembley. Here's Jordan Zamora, wide on the left for the Cherries, 30 yards out, feeling challenged by Worrell, the Forest captain, and it goes out of play for a form of throw level at the edge of the That's the first little exchange. Zamora and Anthony, a little one-two, they got through, but Bill Bill couldn't get the football out of his feet. Long throw down the left side of the box, trying to catch Forrest out, they found Solanke on the byline, lifts it back towards Billing, got a touch on it, but it was cleared away by Forrest, where well, it was Steve Cook who was caught napping, and it goes out for a cherry throw deep inside the Forrest. Well, I, think, I think one thing Dominic will fancy is, is if he gets in a race with, with uh, Cookie. Cherries are still got it by the byline now, and again it's Solanke trying to wriggle his way through down the left-hand side. Forrest defending strongly with Spence, who clears it away, and Kelly and Johnson having another physical match, and Kelly's got hold of Johnson's shirt. There's no doubt that's a, a target for the Cherries. They're looking to literally lock down Brennan Johnson as Phil Billing has it inside the Forest half of the field. Down goes a Forest player. No. They've decided that Phil Billing is at fault there. I think it's uh, Zinkenagel who's gone down, rolling around inside the Forest half. That's Denmark on Denmark. Billing on Zinkenagel. There's a slight pause from the referee Stuart Atwell, who eventually did whistle for the free kick. A little bit of a coming together between the dugouts, Willow, down there. The, uh, what's happening with Gary O'Neill? He's been pushed on the pitch there by a member of the Forest staff. Yeah, but Gordon, the, thing the is, chief steward's having to step in. Phil, Phil Bill gets to the ball first. He wins the ball, and then there's a then there's a clash. Well, Ball's well won. Yeah, I, I mean. Of course, below these days, you know as the laws move on, that winning the ball isn't the be-all and end. That's not a foul. I don't care what you say. Uh, well, unfortunately, what I say and what the laws say, well, uh, uh, the thing that the referees go by, not what your opinion is. But you definitely got the ball, that there's no doubt about. The follow-through the referee didn't like under the endangering safety and all of those kind of things. So it is a free kick to Forrest, which Worrell takes long diagonally. Seventh minute, nil-nil here. Very hectic start, as we thought it would be. You wouldn't sense any nerves around at the moment. Just full of energy from both sides. Here's an opportunity for Garner. The Manchester United loaning over on the far side, but Ryan Christie's working back. And Bournemouth have got it, and it's out for a forest throw. Right in front of their supporters, far side. 35 yards from the Cher Cherry's goal. Right shooting in late, Bournemouth are kicking from right to left. Not only does David Brooks' name ring around the stadium, but his name and his number pop up on the screen here at the Vitality Stadium on the day that the Jerry's Welsh Wizard was declared cancer-free publicly. Absolutely fantastic news. Listen to this. Yeah, that's amazing sound. David Brooks, he's here in the stadium this evening, watching on here, hoping his teammates can take him back to the Premier League as well. Out of play on the far side, didn't miss anything there, the ball's out over by the corner flag for another throw to Forrest. It's back with Garner, once again, one of their chief creators, hooked away by Smith down the line, up towards halfway where Solanke helps it on to Anthony. Billing charging on through the middle, Anthony in the centre circle, knocked it to the left where Billing wasn't quite ready for it. Steve Cook came across, as did Spence, on the edge of the Forest penalty area and it's Spence who will bring it away down this right-hand side. Up towards Brennan Johnson, who tried a little fancy flip, step over, Nat Phillips wasn't to be fooled, and it's back with Jefferson Lerner for ball with on the halfway line. Yeah, there's no way that flick was going to get there. Eight minutes gone, nil-nil, Adam Smith, oh, a poor ball from him over on the far side. It's opportunity now for Zinkenagel to look up and feed Surridge, who hasn't really had too many touches yet, Sam Surridge. One or two jeers from the Cherry supporters, as Surridge gets himself on the ball. And now it's back to Steve Cook again, playing in the middle of the Nottingham Forest back three with McKenna on his left and Worrell on his right. Forward again to Johnson, but again Lloyd Kelly's all over him. And then a the poor ball from Solanke, unfortunately, undoes the hard work done by Lloyd Kelly to win it back. And now Spence driving forward, and he's threaded it in behind, and here's Sam Surridge left foot it, hits the bar! Behind it goes for a goal kick, well that's exactly what Forest do to you, they pick it up on the halfway line, two passes later, Surridge is in, and he's hit the bar. Yeah, Dominic and Anthony just having words there. There was a bit of a misunderstanding with, with the pass, but Sam struck it well, took the crossbar, first blood to Forrest. Uh, it was a, a question mark of offside. Travers tried to get his right hand up, but didn't get a touch on it. And the Forest fans sing the name of Sam Surridge. That's his first opportunity, and he wasn't far away, but it all came from a misunderstanding on halfway between Solanke and Anthony. 
can see why when we talk about Forest having low possession numbers in games, there, that only took two seconds, didn't it? Well, they do break on you, there's no doubt about that. You're going to have to be so careful. The voice of John Williams, the former Cherries assistant manager and defender, himself promoted with the Cherries some 36 years ago, 35 years ago, if I can do the maths, back in 1987. The ball is back with Adam Smith for the Cherries. He's overrun it, is he, on the far side? Can't keep it in. Forest throw on their left, just over the halfway line. Yeah, just a bit, a bit heavy on the touch there for Smith. He couldn't keep the ball in play. Fittingly, by the way, and David Brooks scored in this fixture. The reverse fixer at the City ground, that was 1-2-1. One, one. He was later sent off, but he played a, a notable role in the three points the Cherries took that day. Cherries, of course, are three points clear of Forest. Here's Surridge for the visitors once again, but Finnick inside his own half, and then given away by Lerma. Straight back to Surridge. Cherries just guilty of being a little bit hurried, a little bit rushed a couple of times. Yeah, I think that's the way Forest play, though. They look down the inside left channel for Brennan Johnson. That's been intercepted by Lewis Cook, and here's Anthony up to the halfway line. Left of the centre circle, challenged by Garner. The challenge did enough to put Anthony off, and it's out of playoff Warrell for a Cherries throw down underneath us. Can't seem to make the right decision at the moment with our passes. Very lucky to get a throwing out of that. Well, we talk about cup final atmospheres, don't we, below things. Cup finals often can be a playoff final, sometimes can flatter to deceive, can't they? But this is a, this is a boisterous atmosphere. It, yeah, it certainly is. Lots of noise inside the stadium. Zamora's throw down the left-hand side for the Cherries, over the halfway line, but Forrest have got it back, and here's Surridge once again, looking to switch them to the left-hand side. James Garner through the centre circle. He's got Cole back to his left, Zinkanagel ahead of him. Garner infield to Surridge, 30 yards out, centre field. So, uh, Phillips and Lerma between them close the door on Surridge, and they try and pass their way out of trouble inside their own half, and then Billing is fouled by Zinkanagel. Cherries get a free kick. Yeah, right in front of the referee's nose there, no, no doubt about that one. Tickets were hard to come by. Don't forget the tickets for this game were sold in for mid-February. People have been hanging on to these for the best part of two months waiting for this game. Two and a half months. Season ticket holders that couldn't make the original game, unfortunately, if their tickets were resold for the original game, they're still locked out of this one. Their tickets are still with the repurchases. Just the way it goes after the unfortunate postponement. No one knew then how crucial this game would prove to be. As the Cherries get it back on halfway, it is Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil. As the ball is won on halfway by Yates for Forest, one of their another of their key men down the spine of the team. Lewis Cooks won it back. Billing on halfway. All gets a bit tight. And again, a free kick is given for a foul on Billing. Yates this time clips Billing. And uh, referee Atwell wants a word with Ryan Yates. Whether it's that accumulation of fouls, Willow? Well, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. Is he going to be saying that's your second one today anymore? Well, that was a, a double foul there, really. Yates had a fistful of Billings jersey and then gave him a flip on the Achilles as well. Don't forget you can get in touch with us wherever you are watching. We've got to say hi, by the way, to Paddy in Dubai, watching on the stream. Part of Scott Parker's family. And his family members came over earlier yep. on Willow and had a word, said, please say hello to Paddy. He watches yep. every game hi, on Paddy. the stream in Dubai. Long ball over the top here for Christie. Down the right side of the penalty area, skips off the turf and goes through to Brees Samba in the forest goal. Oh, that's a little bit short. Bolted out, left arm, as Brees Samba. He did miss a, a number of games due to... Uh, Africa Cup of Nations duty. Ethan Horvath stepped in. The ball is back with Lewis Cook, who does well, and now Phillips and Smith will bring it out from defence over on the far side. Cherries, who went to Forest in the second game of the season, and now the reverse fixer in the second to last game of the season. It's not often that two meetings are separated by 44 matches in the calendar. But here's Anthony down the left hand side for the Cherries. Level with the edge of the penalty area. Hooked clear, though, by Yates for Forest. And again, all a bit hectic, neither team able to really get their foot on the ball at the moment as Zinkenagel prods it out for a throw-in on the halfway line to Bournemouth. Yeah, good way back by Anthony, though. Wasn't the best ball into him, had to deal with it. I just went to have a sip of uh, a cup of coffee in front of me, Willow, and I remembered it's your cup of Maltesers. <laughs> that might not have gone well if I tried to down those. A bit of a commentary. Zamora on the halfway line for the Cherries, down underneath us. You're live with BBC Radio Solent, as you have been every game this season, home and away with either myself or Jordan Clark with us here, presenting from pitch side this evening. Tom Murray as well went to Huddersfield. Adam Smith jumps high on the halfway line, and Bournemouth have got it back. 
14 minutes gone, nil-nil. Zamora down the left-hand side once again in the red and black of the Cherries as they kick from right to left towards the Steve Fletcher Vitality North Stand in this first half. Forrest won the toss and turned them round if you're late joining. Phillips is diagonal ball out to the left, was intended for Billing. Anthony will give chase, Spence will try and usher it out for a corner. Has Anthony won a corner there? Oh no, he did well, but in the end the referee Mr Atwell decides the last touch came off. Yeah, Anthony. I think he's got the one right for referee, the reason being all the lads in the corner, right by that, agreed with the referee for once. Nine wins in ten for Steve Cooper's side, it really has been a remarkable second half of the season, as we said, since he came in in September. A lot long ago, on the 14th of February, Forrest with two points outside the playoffs, 11 behind the Cherries, when this game was originally due to be played in mid-February. They were 11 points behind Bournemouth. As Zamora packs it into the sky and it drops down in front of us for a throw-in to Forrest, who were sent off on their team coach from the uh, training ground yesterday by all manner of supporters with red smoke flares and all sorts. Gave them a great atmosphere to send them on their way down south before staying overnight. Here they have it, the visitors with Zinkenagel. Down this near side, lovely skill. Took two Cherries men out of the game. Zinkenagel right side of the penalty area here. Back it goes to Spence. Early call deep to the back post. Important header there from Ryan Christie. His cold back was lurking behind him. He certainly was. That was such an important header. He just got enough flick on it to beat him. Or beat everybody across the face of goal. By well, dropping in at right back isn't one of Ryan Christie's uh, regular parts nope. of his game, but that was really good positional play. Necessary. Zinkenagel over by the corner flag once again here for Forrest as they try and squeeze out an opportunity to cross. Colback's been dispossessed by Smith and out be brought away by Christie. Brought to ground, but fairly. Colback with a challenge. Zinkenagel wide left of the box again here. That's gone behind for a Forrest corner off Jefferson Lerma, their first of the game. One thing I did have a little look at, Chris, as they were lining it up. They've got five or six big lads. Nottingham Forest. This could be tricky. Most teams have these days, haven't they? Forest three centre halves will all come up. Steve Cook at the back post, lurking for Forest. McKenna is at the back post as well, and Warrell will join them now. The third of these, the third of the giant centre halves. Corner to be taken by James Garner over on the right hand, uh, left hand side. Looking to whip one deep towards the back post. Steve Cook is running onto it, beaten in the air. There's a clash of heads there between Phillips and Steve Cook as they challenge for the ball. Both players are on the floor. I think Steve Cook has come off second best there up against Nat Phillips. Yeah, they, I mean, I hope they're both OK. We had a break on there. Christie had a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Nat Phillips is quite quickly up to his feet, Willow. Just to yeah, check I think himself. they're both OK, yeah. We say Steve Cook's OK, well, he's flat on his back, the two doctors... No, but he's just, he's just bumped himself up and they've told him to go back down for a minute. Just to have a look, in case nowadays, of course, with head, head injuries. Well, two of the Forest medical staff running on there. We've got some great insight on the official AFC Bournemouth Club podcast, by the way, for Dr Craig Roberts about some of the procedures that they go through in these situations. So worth a listen to that if you haven't uh, already done so. It's the official club podcast, nothing to do with BBC Radio Solon. Steve Cook has now sat up, leaning on his hands inside the Bournemouth penalty area. Matt Phillips comes across and gets a round of applause because he comes across to this near side. Does he have to come off? Well, he didn't actually receive any treatment, did he? Oh, in fact, he has. Nick Court, as uh, the physio, has gone on and had a quick look at Nat Phillips. Yeah. So Phillips will have to rejoin play from down on this near side. Steve Cook still sat on the turf here. 18 minutes gone, nil-nil. Probably not a bad time either, Willow, after a hectic 18 minutes for both teams just to come across, have a drink and have a reassess. Well, I think that's what's gone on, hasn't it? You know, we have seen teams in the past organise situations where the manager can have a chat with players no names mentioned <laughs> well, Steve Cook's going through the full uh, procedures here I'm just looking if he has got a bit of a cut willow on his head we're just seeing uh, some a TV close-up for the first time looks like there's a bit of blood there for Steve Cook on the top of his head which the medical team are having to deal with You'd be up and you'd have played. I would think so. I would think Cookie's a tough lad, isn't he? You know he's going to get up from this and play on. If there's one game that you'll struggle to get Steve Cook to come off with, unless he absolutely has to, I think it probably is this one. Yeah, bit of Ashley, get on with it. <laughs> so Cook is up. He'll have to come off on this near side as well. He has got a bit of Vaseline on the top of his head, or a plaster or something. And we've played 19 minutes. 
Tuesday night, the penultimate game of the season in the championship. It all started here on a Friday night against West Brom. And we thought West Brom would be one of the Cherry's closest rivals. They've ended up marooned in mid-table, a real failure of a season for West Brom. But Nottingham Forest now, another former Premier League name, but not for 23 years. Not since 98-99 have Forest been in the top flight, which is why their fans are getting so excited about this opportunity. Bournemouth from the restart have had it charged down, and Lloyd Kelly will eventually clear up to halfway. Powerful header by Yates above Billing. Johnson with some clever play, and Sturridge tries to go down, and Johnson with a pot shot from 25 yards, lifts it well over the crossbar. Terry's got it. Yeah, you can see why Johnson's lively. Just tried to kill that one in the top corner. Not too far away. 20 minutes play, BBC Radio Solon Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil. There is unbeaten in six, one defeat in 12. Forest, their one defeat in the last 10 games was at Luton, who played quite a large part of the game with 10 men, but held on for a 1 0 victory. They won 5 1 on Saturday and had 17 shots on target. It's the most shots on target for some years, even including the Premier League. As the ball is won on the halfway line by Lewis Cricket, then runs away from him. And now Forrest in their fluorescent yellow and orange colours. Go back to their goalkeeper, Bree Samba. And just about enough on it. Samba over to the left and McKenna, who takes a bit of a touch and has to go back to his keeper, who's under pressure from Dominic Solanke. And cleared long down the field, up towards Surridge again. He was pinning Adam Smith. A good contest between those two former teammates. And now it's back to Lloyd Kelly on this near side with Johnson closing him down. Spins one down the left side for Phil Benin to chase. And it's uh, hooked out of play by Steve Cook for Cherry throw inside the Forest Arc. That's an excellent pass. And Kelly got his foot right underneath it and tried to put it in Phil Bill's path. Cherry's throw. Zamora takes it. Scott Parker straying out of his technical area down to the left in his grey chinos and navy jacket as Zamora round the outside for the Cherries here to the byline. John Zamora for the pullback. Excellent block at the near post. Goes behind for a corner on the left of the Cherries. Uh, great work by Zamora and Billing again. Just dug the little ball out over defender's foot and got Zamora in. Wins the corner. Well, Forrest have left two up, which means the Cherries are going to send three back. So Smith, Zamora and Lewis Cook are close to the halfway line to take charge of Zinkan Argel and Johnson. But all eyes on the penalty here at the other end as Jade and Anthony from the left-hand side in front of the north stand prepares to deliver this set-piece for the Cherries. Goes very deep towards the back post and knocked down towards the six-yard line. No one there in red to, to get on the end of it after the knockdown from Lloyd Kelly. And now Zamora in a race with Brennan Johnson and Zamora gets plenty on the back pass to his goalkeeper, Travers. I can't help feeling we should have made more of that. It was a great knockdown to the far post. Leap by Jefferson Lerma up against Steve Cook from Travers' long clearance down the field. But it's back with Nottingham Forest in the back three again as we almost hit the quarter point in this game on BBC Radio Solent. Remember, Cherries win and they're promoted this evening. A draw and they would need a point on Saturday. A Forest win and they suddenly assume pole position. They will be at the front of the grid. They go to Hull. Nothing to play for. Got top five at the weekend, Hull. Forest go there on Saturday. Cherries at home to Millwall who have a very slim chance of making the playoffs but not a realistic one as Kelly down the left side of his own penalty area here having to uh, defend against Johnson the two hands in the back there on Lloyd Kelly and the assistant referee down underneath us with Johnson shouting in his face gives the Cherries a free kick yeah Johnson I don't know why he, Kelly was going nowhere there the least he was going to get was a block on it Cookie's down again Steve Cook's down again here I don't know if that's just uh, the blood is streaming from uh, the wound Willow so as Joe Warrell actually comes on with some towel to uh, wipe it away. So they have to patch that up a bit better, Willow, than emptying a pot of Vaseline on top of his head, aren't they? Well, usually you just put stitches in and then put the Vaseline on top. Long talking to for Brennan Johnson after that uh, little push in the back. Well, that wasn't the push in the back. It was the verbal volley that he gave the assistant referee down this near side that uh, didn't go down so well with referee... Stuart Atwell, so both sets of players are now able to come over and get another drink and some further instructions because Steve Cook is down again, sat here having his head injury caused after a clash with Nat Phillips uh, this time actually bandaged up I think by the Nottingham Forest medical staff they usually do that wrap round with the bandages don't they? Well, you'd like to think they were going to do that this time uh, they're still really cleaning the wound up I think before they apply the bandages, let's talk football though Willow, 24 minutes gone, who's happier? I would say it's even. I'm not sure. I think Forrest have had one or two breaks that have been a bit worrying. 
we've had one or two moves, particularly Zamora down the left hand side, who's got in behind and not been able to cut the ball across the face of goal, got cleared up on a couple of occasions, so not a lot in it, I would say. Well, Steve Cook is still sat down here, just inside his own half. Lloyd Kelly just about ran on with some tactical instructions there, and as we're about to tell Nat Phillips the instructions, Brennan Johnson was lurking, so Lloyd Kelly turned Nat Phillips around and moved him away so that Johnson couldn't hear what he was going to say. I think they're going to make a sub. Well, are they deciding that Steve, Cook is wo Steve Cook's wound is such that he can't continue? Let's have a look down there. Just looking to see whether the Forest uh, medical team... There is a, a Forest sub. Uh, one of their shirts is just being prepared, but I don't think he's ready to come on just yet. Tobias Figueredo would be the obvious sub for Forest. There are three of them warming up down the touchline. But as yet, unless it's a spare Steve Cook shirt that they are preparing, well, in case there's blow on his shirt. Well, there's only so much you can do with a cutter. You either put stitches in it and play on, or if you've got a bad one, you have to come off. Well, we've seen it before, we're in Bournemouth colours, when Steve Cook's taken a blow and has battled on with a headband on. Uh, he's come across to this near side. Again, there's still no bandaging or anything, Willow. It is still, uh, unless they have just put some mini stitches in there very quickly, but certainly it's just a blob of white Vaseline. Looks like uh, he's had an unfortunate accident with a seagull while walking along the sea. Yeah, but that just stops it for a minute. Won't stop it forever. Next time he heads the ball, I would imagine, as he comes back on the field now, and it's back with Bree Samba. So we've played 26 minutes. It's Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil on BBC Radio Solent. The closest we've come to a goal, former Cherries Academy striker Sam Surridge hitting the bar after nine minutes. A left-footed shot from inside the penalty area. Yeah, it was, the only thing is it was the top of the bar and over, so I think I think we were had it covered. Oh. Jordan Zamora down this left-hand side, out for a throw-in. Zamora again will have it. Just drives the ball on his red and black cherry shirt down underneath us. The initial sting has just gone out of the crowd at the moment, mainly due to those couple of lengthy stoppages, but it'll be back with a, a couple of passages of positive play from the Cherries, who started brightly. Haven't really threatened Bree Samba's goal, but they might be able to now, as Jaden Anthony picks it up, tried to take on one man too many there, and was dispossessed by Garner, and Lewis Cook snapping away at Zinkanagel, wins it back, Zamora away from Zinkanagel. Zamora in there, challenged by Garner, runs loose on the edge of the box to Billing, who just took his time as the challenge came in from Yates. It's wide on the left-hand side to Jaden Anthony again, level with the edge of the Nottingham Forest penalty area. Anthony down the left side of the box to Zamora. Zamora drives it in! Great clearance at the back post from Colback. Sliding in there, Ryan Christie was throwing himself in and Colback got it away. Terry's won a free kick on the edge of the box, just that don't get. Lerma jumps and wins it. It runs loose though, as down goes Yates. Cleared away by Forrest. Anthony slips. There's quite a lot of people slipping out there tonight. Lewis Cook plays it back into the edge of the penalty area. Solanke there with the challenge. Hammered clear for Forrest by Worrell. It's all very hectic. There was half a chance in there for the Cherries, but some great defending for Forrest by Colback. Was Billing pulled back? Certainly looked like it. Referee said no. Johnson turns Kelly inside the Forrest half, and it's lashed down the field. Nat Phillips powerfully heads it away sideways up over the halfway line. Then Anthony miscontrols, and it eventually goes out of play off Worrell. The Cherries saw on the halfway line. Well, Phil Bill's arguing with the referee again. He thinks that one was a foul. Just having a look at it here. Oh, Christie, was he on the far post? Yeah, Christie, as we said, he was sliding in, and Colback just got in front of him three yards out as the Cherries progressed down the left touchline and want to throw in level with the edge of the penalty area. But Jordan Zamora, a couple of times, has got himself in to the byline and has been close to finding a decent cross. Anthony this time, over towards the left corner flag. Zamora in support, back down the line. Anthony wins a corner as the challenge is snuck behind by Spence. Yeah, again, it, this left-hand side was strongest. Seemed to get the most out of going down this side. Anthony's going to whip this one in, right-footed. Still goalless here this Tuesday night at the Vitality Stadium in the 29th minute. And this big Skybet Championship promotion humdinger. Cherry's corner to the left in front of the North Stand. Jaden Anthony preparing to deliver a right-footed in-swinger. He waits, he signals for his runners to move, which they all do. And they have to go back and start again because he's still standing there waiting. The referee is urging him to get on with it. Comes into the near post, half cleared. Lewis Cook hammering around at the end of the penalty area. But now a chance to release the run over on the far side of Zinkenagel. He won't have the pace to beat Adam Smith here. And Smith clears it away as the last man, which he had to. Cherries are just a bit disorganised at the moment. Brennan Johnson was through the middle, but Jordan Zamora got himself in the way. Acting centre-half. 
as the Cherries were still getting themselves back together after the corner. Yeah, they do, they do break quick, Forrest, no doubt about that. Zinkadago over to the left-hand side, down the left side of the box it goes again, the chance for the cross to come in, comes to the back post and Johnson, cleared away by Zamora. Terrific defending inside the six-yard box, Travels was behind him, but Zamora had to make sure. And now Solanke up to the halfway line, out of play, off the Cherries man for a throw into Forrest on halfway. Well, the Cherries, I thought the referee pointed the other way. I did Cherries, too. Well, he did point the other way, but the Cherries took a quick one, and Forrest got it back on halfway now with Spence down underneath us. Travelling down this near right-hand side, we hit the half hour, nil-nil. Johnson down the right for Forrest, putting a little spell together here. Johnson trying to take on Zamora. Clever defending again from Zamora. It was Johnson prepared to cross, just lent into him, eased him off the ball, and goes behind for a goal kick. Yeah, he does that well, Zamora. There's not many people doing one-on-one. If it does become a race, he usually gets back and just gets a toe on it. That time, Johnson gets a toe on it, out for a goal kick. Just seeing Zamora's clearance again on the monitor. Travers was behind him and probably would have got something on it, but Zamora wasn't to know that. No. Well, it's still hectic stuff. When the ball's in play, it's pinging around everywhere, though, isn't it? And suddenly someone's in before you even can blink. Travers clears it away, right-footed down the field. Another coming together between Billing and one of the Forest players. This time Ryan Yates on the deck. Lewis Cook tried to win it back again. Billing was nearly there. Back over the halfway line from Forrest as they get it forward quickly again. But Nat Phillips down the left side of his own box. Knocks it back to Travers. He clears it away confidently with his left foot up to halfway. Billing flicks it on infield, but Solanke had made a different run. And it's back to McKenna, who will have to go back to his goalkeeper here, the Scotsman. Played every game. And Scott McKenna scored in the reverse fixture, the Scottish defender. As we say, another of those defensive linchpins. The ball bouncing around in the forest half at the moment. Cherry supporters just wanting somebody to make a move towards. Well, I thought, I thought somebody could have given Smithy a shout there just to say you hold it. Just headed the ball back. Well, we're seeing everything that we thought we would see if these two teams both turned up. We're seeing quick changes of attack. We're seeing things happen, spring out of the ground from nowhere. Two excellent footballing teams. Going head to head here, hammer and tongs. At the moment, nothing to choose between them on the score sheet. Nil nil as Ryan Christie inside his own half wins a good challenge. And now Lewis Cook and Smith and Christie will try and pass their way out. Christie took an unnecessary risk, and he's lucky there that Forrest can't control it. Very lucky. He tried a little dink over his man with a little ball on the floor. Well, I don't know, I've never seen him get with somebody that close trying to lift it over him. Well. Forest fans making the noise at the moment over on that far side. Going to the Cherries, 25 yards from their own goal. Still goalless. Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil. Out of play off a of Forest leg on that far side for another throw into the Cherries. McKenna got the foot in. Uh, Dominic just coming a bit short uh, to try and pick it up. So Lanky short of the halfway line from the throw from the Cherries. So we're attacking from right to left, people joining us all the time. And then red and black shirts, black shorts and black socks. With promotion possibly at stake this evening if the Cherries can find a win. Here's Jordan Tamura on this left-hand side now, the Zimbabwe international, out to his academy product teammate, Jane Nantony. Zamura immediately closed down by two Forest players and Spence is away, with Zamura committed upfield. Here's the very dangerous Jed Spence, travelling down this right-hand side. Halfway inside the Cherries half of the field. Spence stands right along the top of the box, where taken down beautifully by Johnson, tries to find room for the shot, does shoot with his right foot, straight down the throat of the Cherries keeper, Mark Travis. Yeah, it's dangerous though, Johnson. Every time the ball's in and around him, something seems to... Seems to happen, didn't get a hold of that shot. But still, the way he collected it, thought was quite clever. Well, they have to, uh, they've had to deal with a few reshuffles up top. Brennan Johnson's played a lot of the season in the number 10 role, but the injuries to Lewis Grabber and Keenan Davis mean that Johnson and Surridge are now the strike partnership and Zinkenagel in the 10 role. So uh, still, despite that attacking disruption, Steve Cooper has found still his team to be fluid and we can see why Brennan Johnson is attracting some big interest he will be in the Premier League next season you've got to be sure whether with Forrest or not yeah that's for sure still Brennan Johnson only 20 years of age the Welsh international as Billing wins ahead and down the left side of the Forest penalty area but it runs off his head and behind for a goal kick to Nottingham Forest yeah trying to claim a corner there Phil Bill but quite clearly came off his head last 
11 minutes till half time. All the usual ways to get in touch apply this evening. Coming right through to Jordan Clark, sat next to me here in the Vitality Stadium press box at Solon Sport on Twitter or WhatsApp us as well as that goes sailing out of play from Forest on halfway. The WhatsApp number, if you haven't written it down already or saved it in your phone, 08000 321 treble three. You need to put Solon as the first word as well. You can send us a voice note as well. We'd love to hear your voice notes if Cherries get the job done today. 08000 321 treble three, wherever you are in the world. It's via a free internet service, of course. I know in some countries it doesn't work, but if you're in one of those countries, just tweet us instead at Solon Sport. Four ball, ball down the right-hand side from Forrest. Has Kelly and Johnson in another race. This time Travers was on. Opts to take a touch, Mark Travers, in his six-yard box. And again, under pressure from Johnson, clears it away down the field. It's certainly his footwork, Mark Travers, and his uh, striking of the ball has got a lot better as the season's gone on. Needed to. So room for Solanke here, looks to find Anthony. Just over the halfway line, Worrell's challenge ran for Zamora, and then Zamora with an opportunity there for the Cherries to fashion something, gave it back to Forrest, and now Spence inside the Cherries half of the field at pace. Johnson's ball to the right, and Zinkenagel, Kelly coming across. And Kelly, had that already gone out? It was already out. The assistant referee says it had, and it's a goal kick. Yeah, it was. Done well there, just pulled his knee away at the last moment till the ball was over, over the, the byline. Forest protest, Forest fans on the far side protest, and it will be a, a, a goal kick to the Cherries away to our right. Nil nil. Of course, well, we talk about Sam Sorridge, we forget, or maybe we don't forget. He scored that goal against Southampton that was disallowed in the 90th minute, which might have kept Bournemouth up. Yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of time for Sam when he, picked, when he was here. Did some really good work. You've seen a replay, that should have been a corner. That actually hit Lloyd Kelly in the field of play. Travers clears it away, right footed, up over the halfway line. Huge leap by Phil Bulling. Landed a little bit awkwardly, but I think he's OK. He's just doubled over at the moment after that landing. Goes out for a cherry story on the left-hand side. Nine minutes remaining in this first half. Cherries nil, Forest nil. Anthony, back to Zamora on this near left-hand side once again as the Cherries try and find a room down the left side to get across into the boxes with Dominic Solanke, their top scorer, shadowed by Ryan Yates, who's got a foot in, and then Ryan Yates tries to win one of those free kicks by the quarter flag that we often talk about, but the referee wasn't having it, and eventually it's a throw-in to Forrest by the corner flag. And when I talk about those free kicks for those joining us, the ones where the defender facing his own byline falls over with a feather in his back. <laughs> The referee wasn't having it that time, Stuart Atwell. No. Maybe Premier League referees are much more wise to it than the usual championship referees that Bournemouth get. Throwing down the left side from Forrest, or the right side for them, is not made it up to the halfway line. Billing again is there with the challenge, leaves Yates on the floor. Now Anthony, 35 yards out for the Cherries, switch out to the right, and Christie, which just got him in a bit of a hurry because Colbat was closing. That's nice slick football. Zamora, left-hand side, is cross shot is blocked by Spence, they're running towards the corner flag, and then Spence charges Zamora in the back. Well, that had to be a free kick, didn't it? I know there's easing people off the ball, but I think just running past him over. That was more like a forearm smash. I know Zamora physically isn't the most imposing to look at, but Spence has no, run into him. He got, his, he got his body in between and he put the brakes on. Oh. I think the referee must have judged that to be the, uh, the old-fashioned shoulder-to-shoulder, which I'm sure you won a few of in your time, Willow, but... Yeah, I think that was a borderline, to say the least. Goal kick to Forrest, which they take short to the left side of their six-yard box. McKenna helps it out to the left, and Colback, who, again, has played quite a lot centrally this season, but is out on the left at the moment in this current Forrest setup with their available players. Back it goes to the halfway line, and Jefferson Lerma knocks one down the right side of the box. Is Christie going to get on the end of that? Well, he didn't really have a chance. Tom Solanke was left on the floor, back towards halfway, left in the... Uh, almost on the concrete by a challenge. I think Phil Billing is protesting to the referee, Willow. The advantage that was played wasn't really one because Christie wasn't going to get on the end of the pass. He was lucky to get off off that one. Well, I think the Forest player is probably lucky to get away with a, uh, a yellow card as well. It was McKenna who, uh, well, just a bit of a coming together, I suppose. It's a cherry throw anyway, 10 yards from the corner flat. Still waiting for the first goal of the evening at the Vitality Stadium. Cherry's in the far corner, they're right. 
have it. Back it comes to Lerma now. Ryan Christie helps it on to Lewis Cook. First touch was heavy, and then he managed to wriggle his way beautifully between two, and then down the right side of the box. Back out to Lerma, who continues to find himself in wide positions. Not the most natural cross of the Cherries have got. Into Billing, inside right channel, towards the byline, in the penalty area. Back out to Lerma, who again finds himself not willing to cross. Lewis Cook does, in towards Anthony. Just a little bit too high for him, and he goes all the way through for a goal kick. Oh, I thought he's just going to take a chance with his run and throw himself at that one, Anthony, but... Maybe there was too much pace on it. Just thought he could have got in front of the defender. Is it an issue, Willow, for the Cherries that Lerma keeps finding himself out wide on the right but doesn't seem to want to put the crosses in? Yeah, it's part I'm, of the I'm not quite sure that the way Jefferson is tonight. I mean, he's given the ball away once or twice. He's won all his headers. No doubt about them. Cheers for Billing as he charged down the clearance from Steve Cook down the field, which was long. Phillips out for the Cherries on this near side. The ball bounces into the Nottingham Forest dugout, which is the right of the two down to our left as we look. And Forest have a throw. Five minutes till the interval. Cherries nil, Forest nil. BBC Radio Solon right across the south this evening. The tuning in thinking the teams will be out shortly. This was a seven o'clock kickoff. Lewis Cook has it up to the centre circle. Solanke's in space if he can release it. Solanke furious that he didn't get it. And then Lewis Cook trying to find Lerma. Didn't give him much chance. Garner got a foot in. And then Sorridge goes down on halfway, but it's picked off by Garner. And over to the left and Zinkenagel. 35 yards out here for Forrest. And they go backwards. There was a real opportunity there for We Lewis should have Cook made more Solanke of that. In, Willow. Should have made more of that. If he just put, got it out of his feet and put it in the space. Yeah, one touch too many from Lewis Cook. As Forrest looked to put Sorridge in. Sneak it in behind. Sam Surridge is offside, it's a very late flag, Mark Travers did exceptionally well as Surridge tried to go round him, Travers diving down to his right, got a hand in, tapped Surridge on the back, the flag came very late. Well it's one of those situations, if it goes against you, I'm thinking, say Sam would have got in injured on, on that occasion. Well just watching the replay, he's not offside below is he? Looks very, very close. I don't think he's offside. I think the defender's foot is playing him on there. That would have been very controversial that is close. if Surridge should have made something of that. But Travers did really well Willow, with his right hand. Yeah. As Surridge tried to go around him. It was close though. Four minutes remaining in the first half. These are, of course, are Premier League officials today who normally have the safety blanket of VAR. I'm just watching the replay, Willow, of Travers on Surridge. I'm not sure if Travers actually did get the ball, but he might have got Surridge's leg. He did. I think he did, Willow. Yeah. Oof. That would have been very interesting if the yeah. uh, flag hadn't gone up there. I didn't see the referee point to the spot or uh, go to point to the spot before the late flag. As the long crossfield ball from Smith. Get it. Headed behind. In fact, it's Christie who's headed it behind. He was hoping that Travers would be able to get there, but he couldn't. And Forrest have got a corner here. Over on the left-hand side, three minutes before half-time. Nil-nil. That's their fans you can hear. Yes, it is. And they know they've got a set piece, a chance of going in the lead, especially at this late stage in, in the first half is always an advantage, big advantage just get a couple of shots on our monitor as Forrest prepare for this corner of fans around the ground biting their nails Forrest corner, if they get the lead by the way they're very, very effective at hanging on to it Forest corner from the far side, the left. James Garner, deep to the back post, swinging over everybody. Billing was there and did well. And then hammered clear by Christie. Forrester again screaming for a handball decision. Jed Spence is arguing with the assistant on this near side. The ball's back with the Forest keeper, Bree Samba. I, I can't say I've seen anything. I don't know if you did. Well, we'll have another look. It was Billing who was jumping with two Forest players and they look for a ball down to the left-hand side. Great run being made here by Zinkenagel who stayed over there. Left side of the box goes past Adam Smith. Zinkenagel's low shot to the near post. And Mark Travers deals with it comfortably. Well done, Travers again. Got down nice and low, got down early. Got two surfaces behind it, gloves and body. Good work. Well, a couple of talking points then in that uh, last couple of minutes. As the uh, handball shouts against Phil Billing, I think it was, and before that, Surridge looked onside and then looked like he might have been brought down by Travers as he tried to round the keeper. The decisions went the Cherry's way. Nil-nil at Solent Sport. If you're watching the pictures, what did you think? As the flag Sorry. goes up again this time on this near side for Sam Surridge in an offside position inside the Forest half. Forest just having a little spell, aren't they? Just moving us about a bit, got some step plays going. Well, you can see why they had 17 shots against Swansea, can't you? And, yeah. uh, on target, that was. 27 in total, 17 on target. They make things happen very quickly. Mark Travers could be in for a busier night as the evening goes on. 
Do we need more? Kiefer. Kiefer, Kiefer more. We will get there by the time he retires. <laughs> we'll get you saying a very well-known international player with the correct name. I'm going to start calling you Joe. The ball over on the far side. It's all right, Forrest left. Terry's uh, Forrester got it at the moment at the bat with Steve Cook. Forward it goes to the centre of midfield, miscontrolled by Garner. And now it's Lewis Cook driving away through midfield. Very similar to Garner, they're very similar players. In fact, it's Inconagel, sorry, I've got my Forest players mixed up. And what's happened there? The referee's blown the whistle for an earlier uh, pullback, I think, by Zinconagel earlier in the piece. Free kick to the Cherries on the edge of the centre circle. It was, de it was definitely a delayed action, wasn't it, from Cookie? I think he was trying to sort of... Uh, Stay on his feet, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think he was trying to stay on his feet. I don't know. I thought he slipped. Well, uh, certainly a few Forest players are having a word with the referee about that. As we have a little look back on our monitor again, Zinconagel had a little pull back at Lewis Cook. Oh, no, I don't, there's not much in that, is there, when you look back at it? It was a bit of a stumble from Cook, but I don't think there was enough in that to be a free kick. Nothing in it. Fourth official Josh Smith has come to the touchline with his board, which is coming up in a few seconds, to tell us how much time he's added on at the end of this game. Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil, at the end of the first half, I should say. At Solon Sports on Twitter, WhatsApp 08000 321 treble 3. Steve Cook is off again on this near side. They have to play on without him. They are going to play on without him. Three minutes added on at the end of the half here. So Forrest are down to ten temporarily. They're without a centre half, so the Cherries would be advised to get on with this. While Forrest have got a bit of a, a bit of disarray at the back. Well, though, they can stitch him up at half time. Yeah. The ball is on the halfway line with Zamura at the minute. Cherries haven't got anybody really through the middle where Steve Cook's area is vacated and they've had to cover him quickly. He's trying to get back on now. Cherries telling the Cherries just to wait while they get Steve Cook back on. I think he's still got blood in his face, hasn't he? He's having to change his shirt now, Steve Cook, so the play continues without him at the moment, the former Cherries captain. Back on the halfway line, though, at the moment. Cherries, well, you can see the Cherries fans, Willow, think that with Forrest with ten men and no centre-half, get the ball forward. Phillips to Solanke. Down the left side, Zamora once again. Cook is now back on. Anthony, left side of the penalty area. Cherry's patient here, around the box. Dom Solanke with a little swerve, body swerve, away from his man, Worrell. Back to the left side of the box, in from Zamora. Lands around the penalty spot, breaks for a forest shirt. Hammered away by McKenna, up towards the halfway line, where Nat Phillips and Lloyd Kelly now will deal with this situation. I say they'll deal with it. Kelly under Should pressure. Should have gone back the keeper, Chris. Yeah, Kelly under pressure, and Johnson tried to play it forward and knocked it straight out sideways for a throw. No, I should have gone back the goalkeeper. That was always going to put Lloyd under pressure. He had to do things very quickly. Well, it's been a very entertaining half, there's no doubt about that. Hasn't uh, failed to live up to expectations at the moment. It just feels like one slip from someone, one false pass. That's what it comes down to sometimes, you know that yeah. by now. It's going to be that tight. Adam Smith now, charging down the right-hand side. Still a minute of added time to play. Smith's ball cannons out of play on the far side. Off McKenna, and it'll be a uh, throw off Garner, sorry, and it'll be a throw into the Cherries. Level the edge of the penalty here, and taken quickly. Back to Ryan Christie, the Scotsman, for the Cherries. They have to go even further back to Lloyd Kelly, their skipper, on the left of the centre circle. Out to Anthony, near side the left, Zamura though wasn't quite as hungry for it or as on the move as Worrell was and he came sliding in the forest skipper and put it out for a throw. -in. Starting to think about Bombelli as well. Zamura down the left side for the Cherries with the throw. The time ticks away in this opening 45 minutes, I'll make it 30 seconds to play. Stay with us at half-time, Jordan will read out the best of your thoughts. Lewis Cook, over to the right, some more room for Adam Smith. Can he get Christie to try and take on his full-back, Colback, over on the far side? Christie with support from Lerma outside him, back onto his left foot, still Ryan Christie's going, getting one or two shoves off balance. Referee was again was happy for it to continue. Kelly wins it on halfway, and now Anthony. Spence all over the back of him, though. And only just a handful of seconds remaining as Bournemouth have it in the forest half of the field. Christie's not down the line, is easily dealt with. And that'll be half-time, then, in this game that we knew would be on the front foot. Two teams going at it, and that is exactly how it's proved here at the Vitality Stadium. But nothing to separate them on the score sheet. Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil. I'm not sure how that first half has settled the nerves of Cherries fans, if at all. Lots of fans standing around talking in the stairwells and what might have been in that first half.
We're underway in this second half. Bournemouth from left to right in this second half. Towards the Ted McDougall South Stand. Red and black stripes, black shorts and socks. No substitutions at half-time from either team. Forrest in a luminous yellow predominantly kit with orange flashes down the front. Yellow, shocked, uh, yellow shorts and yellow and orange socks. Our officials are in black. Stuart Atwell, the Premier League referee, is in charge this evening. I'll give you the two team lineups in just a moment. Steve Cook is uh, still not having any bandage around his head. I think he's been stitched at half time, but still none of those Terry Butcher bandages in sight after that clash of heads with Nat Phillips earlier on. The ball's with Phil uh, Jed Spence over on the right hand side, and Forrest playing it around at the back. Nil nil, the score. Closest. Either team came to a goal. Sam Surridge hitting the crossbar in the first half. Strong claims for a penalty if an offside flag hadn't, we think, wrongly gone up. Forrest maybe didn't get the rub of the green with that decision. But the ball is over on the far side of the right now. Down the far side it goes from Worrell, looking for the run of Zinkenagel over on that far side. Lewis Cook now up over halfway. Nice little back heel to bring in Jordan Zamora. We'll give you the teams very shortly, I promise, when the ball goes out of play. A lovely warm reception of the song of David Brooks' name on seven minutes with that news of his all clear from cancer made public earlier on today. Balls out of play on the far side. Cherries have Travers in goal. The defenders on the right are Smith, Phillips, Kelly and Zamora. The same team from Saturday. Lerma, Cook and Billing in midfield. Christie, Solanke and Anthony, the front three. The Cherry subs are Woodman, Mepham, Brady, Pearson, Laird, Dembele and Moore. Jamal Lowe was a late withdrawal. He was due to be on the bench as the ball goes back to Adam Smith on this near right side. Forrest have Samba in goal. Worrell, Cook and McKenna are their defenders. Spence, Garner, Yates and Cole back and then Zink and Argel just behind Johnson and Surridge as that's shanked out of play by Adam Smith down this near side. The Forest bench is all about the keeper. Figueredo, Laria, Mighton, Cafu, Silva and Lolly. So Willow, you were calling for some substitutions at halftime or at least some thoughts about them. You weren't impressed particularly with Ryan Christie in that first half. No, I thought I think we could do even if it meant Dembele going over that side. I know he's not his perfect side, but we can't break Anthony and Zamora up because they're our major threat. Ball on this near side as Villarreal have gone 1-0 up on Liverpool after just three minutes to pull it back to 2-1 on aggregate. So Arnold Danjuma's Villarreal have really opened that tie up after their 2-0 defeat at Anfield last week. They've gone one up early in the Champions League semi-final second leg, the second biggest game going on in world football this evening after this one. Remember... Cherries win and they're back in the Premier League this evening. A draw and they would need another point on Saturday against Millwall. A Forest win as Steve Cook brings down Solanke in the centre circle. Referee is going to want a word with Steve Cook here, I think, about that. And Solanke goes to the turf. Yeah, great bit of skill by Dominic, wasn't it, right on the centre circle. Well, it's uh, again, it's a clever block off by Steve Cook, which is punished only with a free kick. Nothing more from referee Stuart Atwell. So yes, a reminder of Forest win this evening. They would go above the Cherries on goal difference and Bournemouth would have to map better their results on Saturday. Forrester away at Hull. 45 minutes though might render that useless. As Anthony now, 25 yards out for the Cherries. Here's Dom Solanke. First sight of goal really. Strikes it into a sea of Forest legs on the edge of the box and Cherries get a throw in. Yeah, it's going to have to be some strike from that far out. Dominic taking the chance anyway. Throwing taken by the Cherries over on the left-hand side. Back to Billing. Now an opportunity for Zamora to try and get across. And he's put two good ones in already. Unfortunately, Zamora tugs back the defender who falls down inside the uh, penalty area. Garner. And that'll be a free kick to Forrest. Yeah, he still looks on major threat. Zamora, every time he gets down in them bottom corners, has a little wriggle around. Once or twice he's got to the bar line and chopped it back, but nobody could get on the end of it. Well, the Cherries have kept four clean sheets in their last six games only six out of 21 at home though this season only six of their home games in the league have produced clean sheets and very solid away from home this is a forest team of course who scored five at the weekend as their keeper Brees Samba the Congolese goalkeeper all in white clears it long down the field from the free kick Lewis Cook flicks it on the centre of midfield but it's given away by Zinkenagel the former Watford man who won promotion with Watford last season looking to make it two in two seasons as that goes out of play on the far side for a forest throw <laughs> great header by one of the fans to head it back in there that'll get him on TV I'm sure talking about back-to-back -back promotions Emiliano Marcondes is looking to do the same scored the winner for Brentford in the playoff final last year 
of course, not part of the Cherries match day squad this evening. Here at Forest over on the right hand side now. Nice work from Brennan Johnson, driven into the box looking for Surridge. And Phillips and Kelly between them in the Cherries penalty area, clear it away. Heavy touch from Solanke, couldn't control it. Back to the centre circle where McKenna had to be quick, got in there ahead of Solanke. And the throw in decision goes Forest way as it took a touch off Solanke as McKenna's clearance came yeah, through. Yeah, just as you're closing down, just flick his boot. That's the voice of John Williams, the former Cherries defender and assistant manager and promotion winner with us here on BBC Radio Solon. We heard from last year's, uh, last time's promotion winning captain Tommy Elphick live on the programme about about 20 past six or so earlier as we built up to this seven o'clock kickoff. Forrest eventually take the restart over on the right side but that throw goes through to the Cherries goalkeeper Mark Travers all in blue who gets his goal kick all wrong, goodness me, that went straight along the ground. Thankfully for him it bounced off Surridge and straight to a Cherries player as he was looking for Christie down the middle. That could have gone dreadfully wrong. Very wrong. Forrest trying to pen the Cherries in here but Adam Smith has snuck out of the trap and now Ryan Christie down the right but across comes Steve Cook and clears it away into the executive seats to our left. Yeah, good work by Christie there, just trying to put him in. Cookie gets there first. Well, I think Mark Travers deserves that break, Willow, for the ways before yes, this season. Yes, I mean, he's done very little wrong. He's been magnificent, no, just didn't catch that one. Yeah, he was going for the sort of flat horizontal one, wasn't he, down the field to Christie, but knocked it straight along the ground. Thankfully, no damage done. Lerma's got it. Nice little triangle down in front of us on this near right side for the Cherries. Adam Smith now. Back out to Solanke, but he's wide on the right. They're centre forward and top goal scorer. Now Smith and Lerma. Smith was battling with Colbat. That's a good tussle, that one. And now it's back to McKenna, who clears it away up to halfway, but only to Nat Phillips of the Cherries. Six and a half gone in the second half. Still nothing on the score sheet in this tight Tuesday night. Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil. Uh, over on the left-hand side, Anthony has it now, looking for Solanke on the top of the box. Amuru had made a run inside, Solanke holds it up inside the penalty area. Still going, Solanke, Forrest claim a handball. Solanke was battling on there and eventually falls to the ground and Forrest clear it away. Yeah, he just tried to, couldn't get it out of his feet at the most important moment. Kelly retrieves it though, and it's now with Jefferson Lerma. Christie screaming for it on this right-hand side if Lerma can find him, which he does now. Over to the Scottish wing wizard to try and make something happen. Instead, he knocks it along the top of the box to Jaden Anthony, who thought about going for goal then changed his mind on his left foot back to Lewis Cook here's Christie again 25 yards out they found Dom Solanke across goal into the side netting there'll be a few on the far side who thought that might have got in but we were right yeah. behind it and unfortunately the wrong side of the post yeah good work goal good build up play got Dominic in and got the shot away but wrong. probably would have been better going for the other post is that the first time they've got Solanke in Willow in 53 minutes I can't remember many more times Samba in the Forest goal, drills one straight down the middle, they don't mess around Forest, that's again why they have often low possession stats but a high offensive threat, they just get it forward, it's not so much a long ball game, it's just direct isn't it, they're not quite the same thing as uh, Lerma and Smith inside their own half and now helped on down this right hand side via a Forest deflection and out of play, throwing on the halfway line to the Cherries. Fans working hard to add a bit of extra energy from the crowd here. I mean, I'm thinking nil-nil's not the worst result at all by any means, but what's in, in Scott's mind? Do we make some substitutions, try and get a bit more out of the front people? Well, lots have happened in these two sides' respective games after the 75th minute this season. So uh, I think this one will certainly be right on edge till the end as the Cherries win a free kick. Adam Smith knocked over just short of the halfway line. Ball back with Nat Phillips in the heart of the Cherries defence coming forward again from left to right. Tuesday night with BBC Radio Solent. This one was an earlier kickoff tonight. Don't forget the final round of games on Saturday. They all kick off at 12.30. Bournemouth at home to Millwall. Nottingham Forest away to Hull. Those now the only two teams who can finish second. Huddersfield are now out of the reckoning and will finish in the playoffs. Sixth place up for grabs. It'll be Sheffield United, Middlesbrough. Luton are still uh, under threat as well after their talking at Fulham. Here's Jefferson Lerma down the right side into the box to Solanke for the Cherries. Ryan Christie coming in support. Christie takes over. Right footed from Christie into the six yard box. Too many yellow shirts there and clear for a Cherries throw. Yeah, looking more dangerous now though. Lerma just getting down the, the outside and putting the ball back first. He's, he's just pulled uh, up and yeah, he's just tweaked himself, Jefferson Lerma, there as he's stopped. I don't know if he carried on running into the board or something. I didn't see off the ball, but 
He's not quite moving at full no, he's not. tilt here, Jefferson Lerma. He's having to think about it. He did say he didn't know whether he was running at full tilt earlier. Well, I don't know if he came into the game with an injury, but we'll keep an eye on him. He'd be a big man to lose. No doubt about that. Cherry's throwing right down by the corner flag on this near side. Ten minutes gone in the second half. Nil-nil. Christie with Lerma limping, throws it to uh, Lerma. There's a foul by Colback, who clips the heels of Christie out on the touchline. And Bournemouth have got a set piece here, which is 10 yards in from the corner flag, down the touchline. Yeah, this is a good opportunity here to work a set play. Well, Lerma's jogged his way into the penalty here. Ryan Christie's just stretching there after clipping his heels. Referee Atwell has inadvertently just kicked the ball away there as he went to mark down the, uh, the foam spot. He back heeled the ball off down the touchline. Kelly's just come over, tell him Anthony where he wants the ball, or Christie, which whatever one is elected to take it. Forrest out a two-man wall just outside the edge of the penalty area. As Bournemouth attacking the goal away to our right in front of the Ted McDougall south stand. Throwing the big men forward from the back. Anthony and Christie are right out on this near side. Referee's keeping a close eye in the middle as Christie swings it in. Goalkeeper punches it away, not massively convincingly, but Samba did do enough there and managed to get it clear. Christie plays one in, lovely ball to Lloyd Kelly, right corner of the area. Lerma back out to Anthony, nicely fashioned. Anthony's cross in, Solanke off balance with the header, went behind Billing who was coming in at the back post. Billing keeps it in over by the corner yeah, player. Lerma's struggling. Uh, Lerma is still over, back, bending over on his knees as Billing wins a throw in, does he, over by the corner flag? Not sure if Lerma is uh, is waving to the uh, touchline. I think they say he's okay. Lerma's going to battle on. Cherry's throwing ten yards through the corner flag. I'm not sure he can, Chris. I think he's just getting them a sub ready. Well, I didn't know what his hand signal was. Let's have a look down the line as to who's getting ready here. Well, Ben Pearson is uh, getting ready, uh, or getting limbered up. So is Kiefer Moore, interestingly, Willow. And Kiefer Moore's bib is coming off. Yeah. That will change the formation. Terry's have got it from the throw-in. Over on the far side of the left. They won a corner there. No, in fact, Forrest with Cooter moved out the way as Billing tried to win it, and it will be a goal kick to Forrest. So, knowing that the win would get them over the line, and with Lerma struggling, Kiefer Moore is about to come on Willow for his second appearance since returning from injury. Yeah. Last one, he scored twice. Well, love some more of that, please. Cleared away by Forrest. Lerma still moving really only on one and a half legs, but he's still, as we know, he is wholeheartedly won it back with help from Lewis Cook. Now Christie is fouled again, but he's played the advantage, the referee. Christie looks to his right, sees an unfit Lerma, so shoots himself. And off the outside of his left foot, unfortunately, Christie way off target. And now Jefferson Lerma quite sensibly, I think the bench uh, producer Carla spotted the bench, we're just telling Jefferson Lerma to get the game stopped. Yeah, here. he's holding his knee, which is never a good thing. Definitely coming off, though. So, Jefferson Lerma, not the kind of player you want to lose after 58 minutes. But Kiefer Moore is going to come on to replace him here. We know what Lerma's like, Willow. He'll just keep going. He just keeps yes. getting up and carried on. But the right thing is, well, just to get it stopped and get sometimes it Sometimes you just have to bite the bullet. We've all been there where you've played on with injuries and it can go wrong for you. Well, I'm Kiefer just wondering Moore if Dom like... Dominic will just drop back into number 10 role. Well, Kiefer Moore has only managed uh, a handful of minutes so far in Cherries Colours. Two goals at Swansea to win the Cherries the point that means a victory tonight would take them beyond Forest. Lerma is being helped up by Nick Court. Well, we know Jefferson Lerma, of course, has missed a, a huge chunk of the season through suspension. He's going to miss the second half or well, most of the last half hour of this game with injury, but... The Cherry supporters singing their songs, applauding Jefferson Lerma off as Keeper Moore gets ready to replace him. I think Dominic's going to do that role. Just listening, like they're getting instructions. He called Anthony over as well. We'll just have a look at it. So Lerma cuts a frustrated figure as he limps off with the help of the physio, Nick Court, to the Cherry's bench. Just couldn't carry on. Kiefer Moore is on, up top, six foot four, a new challenge for Steve Cook, the former Cherries club captain, Kiefer Moore has gone straight onto him in the middle of the back, back three. And Anthony's come over to this right hand side. So we'll wait and see what's happened here in terms of the formation Willow, we'll get you to look at that, you're right, Jaden Anthony has come over to this right hand side, so it looks like Dom Solanke has gone out to the left, uh, Ryan Christie has dropped into the number 10 role and Anthony's come out to the right Willow. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Well, if that is what it is, how are you thinking about that? 
Uh, it's not what I was thought about. Okay. We played an hour. Reinquist has definitely gone more central, and Dom Solanke has definitely gone out to the left. He's just taking the 30 goals. And Anthony's point. over here. Yeah, just, I just said that. But Solanke out to the left is more noticeable, though. Right? Your 30 goal striker out to the left wing. Uh, let's see how it develops. Well, obviously, they were hand was forced with Lerma coming off, so Scott Parker has used that to make the tactical switch with half an hour to play. Still, Bournemouth nil. Nottingham Forest nil if you're just joining us on BBC Radio Solo this Tuesday night. Lewis Cook inside the Bournemouth half of the field with the Cherries kick from left to right. Anthony now up against Colback on this near side. And Kiefer Moore, we know he was barely fit enough below to come on at Swansea, was he, to play that final 20 minutes or so. Got through it. Thankfully, he wasn't needed at Blackburn, so he was able to wrap himself up in cotton wool for a week. Well, he's about a few more days to train, so that's helpful. Kiefer Moore, another one of those who's never played in the Premier League, looking to fulfil a career ambition. Smith down this near right-hand side for the Cherries. Moore tries to win the header, but he's eased off it by McKenna. Now Ryan Christie won the corner flag up against Steve Cook. And Ryan Christie wins a corner off Jack Colback for Bournemouth. Well, with Moore in the middle, we've got more heading power here now. And we've seen him score from a corner once already. Ryan Christie waves to the South Stand supporters behind him down to our right. And that corner flag, and they respond with a cacophony of noise. Christie spots the ball down carefully. Keep your eye on Kiefer Moore, Willow, to come in from the back post as we hit 61 minutes play. Bournemouth nil, Forest nil. In from uh, Christie, and unfortunately straight into the hands of the man in white, Bruce Samba, the Forest keeper. Yeah, how are you going to hit that sort of corner? I think you've got to have somebody standing in front of the goalkeeper. Long volley clearance from uh, Samba down the field. Forrest claiming that it came off the head of Adam Smith, but the referee Stuart Atwell not pulled, and it will be a throw into the Cherries. Forrest, of course, had a great cut run, which really did fuel their revival in the second half of the season. They beat Arsenal and Leicester in the FA Cup, then Huddersfield, and were only beaten 1 0 by Liverpool, ultimately. There's no doubt that that confidence they took from those Premier League scouts helped fuel this second half of the season to be challenging the Cherries for second place. Spence over on the right now. Solanke with some new work to do in this formation, but they've got beyond Billing here. Ryan Yates over on the right-hand side. Billing tracking back, wins it back. Referee happy with the challenge. Now Billing looking to get the Cherries moving forward with Zamora. He's got Solanke ahead of him. Good challenge from Spence came in, and all of a sudden they've turned it around, and Zinkenagel is sprinting away down the right-hand side for Forrest here. Zinkenagel right Right side of the box, good challenge came in from a combination of Kelly and Lewis Cook and it's cleared up to halfway where it's smashed forward by Worrell rather aimlessly onto the edge of the penalty area. Phillips won it ahead of Surridge, round in the centre of midfield, Lewis Cook again and he's laid it off to Ryan Christie who's through the centre circle with Kiefer Moore to his right, here's Kiefer Moore, Christie through the middle wants it back, Kiefer Moore looks up, tried to find Christie, it was blocked but actually the free kick's been given for a foul on Steve Cook. Christie, I think it was, he was penalised for pulling Steve Cook back as they tried to make their way through the middle. Yeah, that was a dis disappointing end to that run. Thought we had them outnumbered. The referee didn't agree. Uh, Lewis Cook is down on the halfway line here, just took a knock in the aftermath of all that. I thought Steve Cook actually was trying to block off Ryan Christie and in the end uh, got the free kick himself. And it's just a coming together between the two, really. I mean, Ryan Christie hasn't done a lot wrong. I think the referee has just seen Steve Cook on the ground and given him the decision, will it? Yeah, I don't... Uh, I'm not, no, I'm not sure that's a foul at all. Uh, it was quite a heavy challenge from James Garner on uh, Lewis Cook further back up the field. Lewis Cook's up on his feet. Forrest get the free kick, just outside their penalty area. 64th minute. Still Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil. A draw for the Cherries would mean they would need another point against Millwall here on Saturday. Forrest away to Hull. Wouldn't be able to catch the Cherries. The ball on the near side, Kiefer Moore, was he barged in the back there by McKenna? Certainly Scott Parker had his arms out wide, just in front of the incident. The officials judging Forrest favour. <coughs> back it goes in the centre circle to Joe Worrell, the Forrest captain. Over on the right-hand side and Spence now, looking to link up with Johnson, but Lloyd Kelly has done a, a good job on Johnson for most of the evening. Yeah, he has for most of the evening, but he's, he's still a threat, he's that sort of player you can see. This time the flag goes up against Johnson on the far side as Samba's long goal appearance for Forrest ends up in the Cherries half of the field. When you look at the bench below, the Cherries fielded at Forrest away. The bench, Dennis, 
Davis, Brennan Camp, Kyle Taylor, amongst others, Nathan Mariah Welsh, Lucas Glover, I'm oh, sorry, Ryan Glover, Christian Sadie, that's a poor ball from Nat Phillips out of play on the far side. That was a team when the Cherries won 2 1. They'd hardly had a first team appearance between them on the bench when they played Forest away earlier in the season. Yeah, amazing. Looking a few yards here, the crowd aren't happy. Yeah, certainly a lot of those not involved this evening. The Jack Stacey's, the Mark Condeses, the Leaf Davises, the David Brooks have all played a key part in the season, maybe in the first half of the season, before the Cherries got bodies back and were able to bolster in January. Although a number of those loan signings haven't probably featured as much as they would have liked to. Todd Cantwell not in the squad again this evening. Only Nat Phillips, really, of the January loan signings has been one regularly in the team. Freddie Woodman has hardly had a sniff, the lone goalkeeper. Here's Kelly looking for a long one to Billing down the left-hand side in a race here with Yates. Left side of the box, Yates tries to win a free kick. Referee's not having it, plays the advantage. Bill Billing went for goal himself and in the end knocked it to Samba. He might have got a free kick on the edge of the box. There were three to his left, one to the pullback. Billing tried to knock it across and the goalkeeper did very well indeed, I think, Samba. He, I think he tried to pick Anthony out. Didn't get there though, unfortunate. Well, it was all happening. First of all, Yates tried to claim one of those free kicks facing his own byline. The referee wouldn't have it. Then he clipped Phil Billings' heels. That was close to being in the box. The referee played the advantage, and as Billings tried to square it, just looking at a replay here, Willow, it's probably outside, isn't it? I think initially, as Billing got brought down there, the referee played the advantage, as you probably would have wanted him to do, I think, in that situation. Brilliant from Zamora on the centre spot. Knocks it to the right and keeps it more. Excellent challenge came in there from Steve Cook, sliding into a dispossession. Here's Anthony for Bournemouth, right side of the penalty area. Ryan Christie onto his left foot. Christie went for goal, off a forest head, spinning over towards the corner on the far side, but the goalkeeper will get there. Zoltan Zamora, absolutely amazing. He won the ball back twice to get the... was moving forward. Well, the game is opening up, isn't it, Willow? Wide open now as Sturridge brings down Anthony on the halfway line. Jerry's fans are claiming a card here for Sam Sturridge as he's running off with the ball, claiming he hasn't heard the whistle. But it's open, Willow, is it now? Because Forest know they really need to win. Well, that's it. And we said before the game, I can imagine them really going for it like in an FA Cup tie because there's everything to gain. It's getting a little bit frenetic. It's getting edgy in a different way now. It's not on the edge of your seat nerves, it's excitement nerves, I think. Solanke over on the left-hand side now. Maybe you're sitting at home and you're now on the floor. Maybe you've moved closer and closer to the radio as the course of the evening's gone on. Solanke is dispossessed over in the far corner and Forrest cleared a halfway where Kelly and Johnson... In fact, the ball's gone out anyway. In fact, there's a free kick given on the far side against the Cherries as Ryan Yates is left on the floor. It must have been Dominic. Couldn't quite see. Thought the ball had run clear. Well, we're into the final quarter of the game now, Willow. Just looking down to the forest bench, I saw a bit of movement a minute ago from somebody starting to look like they were getting ready. The last 10 games, Willow, Forest have set, kept six clean sheets, they've scored 26, and they've only let in four in their last 10 games. Nice figures. Tonight they've scored none and they've let in none. That is how the scoreline stands on BBC Radio Solo. Cherries nil, Forest nil. Now a chance for Kiefer Moore away down the left-hand side again, but isolated. No one with him at the moment. Moore trying to hold it up. Arrival in the box now, three or four. Moore went for goal. Not the right option. Halfway out the south stand from Kiefer Moore. <laughs> well, he have to say he went for the glory. Glory shot there, but didn't catch it at all. Can't have a go at someone who's trying. He beat two people to get get the shot in, but it was time wide. So the ball over on the near side now for Forrest. Their left hand side is Garner and Colback. Get it under control and just slow things down ever so slightly. 21 and a bit minutes remaining. Cherries nil, Forest nil. Forward from McKenna, but it was too strong for Zinkenagel, and it was dealt with by Adam Smith, and he goes back to Nat Phillips who was a Bolton player, by the way, when the Cherries beat Bolton in 2015. Not in the squad, but he was on the Bolton staff as a youngster when the Cherries won promotion last time around. Here he is trying to help the Cherries get promotion. Fouled by Zinkenagel on Lewis Cook was late. Referee allows advantage. Might come back to that in a second. Here's Anthony, right side of the box for the Cherries. Back to Christie once again. Christie's ball into Solanke, who comes central this time. Solanke trying to find room in the penalty area. Two or three surrounded him and managed to get it clear for Forrest. Zinkenagel on the ball now inside the Cherries half. Gets that all wrong, slips as he does so, and it goes out of play. Yeah, well, look, Argyle for his trouble here. He's going to get a yellow card. Well, once he gets to his feet, I think. Yeah, we're well, looking a lot more threatening now. I don't know whether the change has done that or the boys have just stepped it up, but it's 
He tells you were doing the most of the attacking. Well, I think it's just a long ticking off for Philip Zinkenar. Well, he gets away without a yellow card. There hasn't been a yellow card this evening so far. Referee Atwell, to be fair, has kept things moving and has kept on top of it pretty well. Uh, Ryan Yates has come all the way over to the left-hand side. The referee restarted the game. Yates sat down, trying to get some treatment. The game was moving, so he's got to get back on his feet and get going. Anthony on this near side. Yates tried to pull him back, but missed. Anthony into Moore, into the penalty area. Keeper Moore back to Anthony. Inside right channel. Anthony saved by Samba. A snapshot beaten away by the goalkeeper with his left hand. It's going to run out of play for a corner over on the left-hand side to the Cherries. That is definitely more threatening. Keeper did ever so well to be fair. He reacted to the. I think he was just going to go in off the far post from this angle. But he's just punched at it and gone out for the corner. The Cherries have around 20 minutes more to try and get the job done this evening here at the Vitality Stadium. They have a corner on the left hand side to be taken by Jaden Anthony, whose shot was parried away by the Forest keeper, Bree Samba. Anthony whips it straight into the box, but straight onto a Forest head and cleared away. Only as far as Lewis Cook up against Zinkan Argel, who again is snapping away at him in the half middle of the forest half. Poor ball in from Lewis Cook, has left the cherry slightly exposed, and here's Brennan Johnson away. Lewis Cook had a little clip at him. Johnson's still moving forward here. Lewis Cook has another go at him, then Johnson overhits it, and it will go through for a goal kick. And Johnson is absolutely furious, and to be honest, I can see his point of view, Willow, because yeah. Lewis Cook had two nibbles at him. Yeah. Johnson kept on it going on his feet, and then lost out because yeah, of it. Yeah, I can see what he's thinking there. Another play down. Well, Yates is down again in the centre circle, getting some treatment here. He's tried a couple of times to get some attention. But Brennan Johnson there is running forward. Lewis Cook, he nearly took the yellow car for the team and brought him down, didn't he, Willow? But wasn't able to on a couple of occasions. Johnson was honest, kept going because he had two up with him as well. And Lewis Cook just did enough to knock him off balance. Well, I don't know yeah. why the referee didn't bring it back, to be honest. Well, it was a strange situation, Johnson. I think he was trying to get the shot away then just at the last minute thought about that pass but he put too much on the pass and that was out for a well, I think uh, I think Ryan Yates here is uh, I'm not sure what happened to him as a result of the uh, collision with Solanke a little while ago he's jarred his right shoulder from a replay that we are looking at but it's probably not a bad moment for Forrest certainly with 18 minutes left just to have a moment here to oh, take the sting out of the game definitely taking the sting out of the game we all know that gets done nowadays on a regular basis by everyone you have to say but still, don't forget, a draw leaves Bournemouth just needing a point on Saturday against Millwall. And of course, that would mean Forrest would need to go and win as well. A draw here, if Forrest were to lose on Saturday, it wouldn't matter what Bournemouth did here. I wouldn't count on that. I wouldn't count on Hull doing too no. much, would you? No. No. I'd be surprised if they even turn up for the game, to be honest. <laughs> For their performance at Bristol City the other day. Let's just see this one through. Yeah, we're still waiting for Ryan Yates, who's now marching off the field with the physio, the Forest physio, in close attendance. Are they making a change or are they keep him moving here with Yates? He's one of their instrumental figures. He's probably about as important to Forest in central midfield as Lerma is to the Cherries. He's already limped off, replaced by Kiefer Moore, which caused the Cherries uh, to reshuffle. <coughs> so Yates and Cook are off the field here. Forest has got nine, Willow. Steve Cook came off with some. Uh, uh, a running repairs update to his Vaseline head. Uh, has he got some? He's got some sort of bandage on there, I think. Now, is he? I'm just looking here. He has got. Some, has he got some black tape on there now? I can't quite see, but uh, it's hard to see from here whether it's just a slick of uh, Vaseline or whether he has got a headband on. But anyway, the restart comes now. Billing wins a great flick on Solanke now inside right channel. Steve Cook just back on the field, managed to get a foot in, and Samba releases Spence for Forrest over on the far side of the right. They know they just need one moment on the counter-attack to try and put themselves in the box seat going into the final weekend of the championship season. After nine months, forward it goes from Forrest down the right-hand side. Cherry's got a man down now. Jordan Zamura is down over on the far side. Referee, as the ball goes out of play, is going to stop it here. Jordan Zamura took a bit of a whack there, Willow. Yeah, he's holding the back of his leg again. I hope that's not a problem from the old injury. Probably took an aerial whack, Willow. Yeah, he's taken an elbow in the face from Yeah, Sam yeah, Surridge, he's, got, so. he's got hit in the uh, chops. So Zamora's going to need uh, some attention here. Nick Court jogging over on the far side. Well, Willow, we're coming towards the 75th minute of the game. The Cherries have won 10 points after the 75th minute this season, but they've also lost nine points after that time of the game as well. Well, it's coming to that stage of the game. Then we'll, we've got to look after the back door. That's the main thing. If we get a point, all well and good. 
I mean, I actually feel over the last 10 minutes or so, we look like we're going to get a goal threat. Zamora is just receiving his attention on the field over on the far side. And I think I will add Willow is that Forrest this season have taken the lead 29 times. Only six times have they been pegged back. We talk about them protecting the lead. Yeah. So if you let them get in front here, that is a problem. Well, the trick is to keep it all nice and safe and make sure we get at least a point out of this. Well, among the more minor statistics, the Cherries have never done a double over Nottingham Forest. This is the ninth season they've played each other. They would do if they could win here. Zamora is now back on his feet and has been helped over to the far touch line. So, it all comes down. We said it all comes down to 90 minutes. It now all comes down to 15. Nil-nil on BBC Radio Solar. Zamora back on. Forest restart, but give it away. Jaden Anthony now with some room to move up to the halfway. Ryan Christie out to his right, but it wasn't a good ball. And there was some good work back by Cole back there to switch it around, and now Forrest in possession. Garner out on the left-hand side. And it goes back to McKenna on the left of the back three once again. I thought he should have run with that more, Anthony. Steve Cook Keeper. goes long down the inside right, but over the top and through for a goal kick. I was just watching the keeper's starting position there. I think anything that bounces in the box, you've got to be ready and get out to it. That one just run right through for the goal kick. We talk about points drop below, by the way. The goalkeeper's got the ball away to our left. I was looking at the bottom 10 results for these two teams. Games you'd expect them to win. Forrest have won 15 out of 19 against the bottom 10. The Cherries only won 12 out of 19 against the bottom 10. You know where some important points have slipped away as Keeper Moore is penalised for bundling over Jack Colback down underneath us in the Forest half of the field. Yeah, he wanted a foul just before that, but was never going to get it. Referee was right beside him. Bournemouth nil, Nottingham Forest nil. 13 and a half minutes remaining. All the reaction to come up. We're on air till 10. The 7 o'clock kickoff gives us a beautiful full hour of reaction. Here come Forest down the right now. They're looking to get Spence away into the penalty area. Still he goes to the byline and he's run it straight out of play. Steve Cooper's nearly on the pitch with Fury. That is Brennan Johnson, sorry, he was down the right-hand side. Lloyd Kelly again, physically. Yeah, he's been magnificent tonight, Kelly. All his work has been tip-top defensively. His headers... His passing is much better. Again, I think Brennan Johnson's got a pretty strong case for a free kick. Well, Kelly's got his arms around his waist. The problem is, Johnson, we, we ask players to stay on their feet, they stay on their feet, and they don't get the free kick, so you can see why they go down. That's twice now for him. He's been honest, and he hasn't got the free kick either time. I'm more concerned about the other end. Well... Don't you worry about giving us an opinion, Willow, any time. <laughs> Smith halfway inside the uh, Cherries half of the field now. But Forrest have picked it up with Ryan Yates. Wide to the left. Surridge driven wide. Over towards the byline. Adam Smith goes rushing over to close down the space. That's out of play off Surridge. And that'll be a Cherries throw-in. What? Sorry, that'll be a Forrest throw-in, according to the officials. Taken short. Back it comes to Garner. Whips one in early towards the penalty spot. And it's turned behind by Forrest. And that will be a goal kick to the Cherries. And it's Yates... He's down again inside the Cherries half of the field, hurting his shoulder again. Oh, he's got a neat treatment again. Well, we're back to Cabango at Swansea, aren't we, Willow? Went down 106 times and eventually had to come off. If, you, if it's hurt and you're battling on, credit to you, well played. But if it is, you need to top it every time you come down. You're going to have to think about coming off. But Yates has got back up and he's getting on with it. Let's say there's been very little tomfoolery in the game, and mostly this game has just been played at the pace we'd have expected it to. Steve Cook and Kiefer Moore jump, a fair header, which was won by the Forest man, but it's given away on the halfway line, and now Adam Smith for the Cherries wins a throw in off Sam Surridge, down underneath us. Cherries have it with Anthony. Anthony has certainly snuck a few yards, which Steve Cooper, the Forest manager, was protesting about. Billing now, being tugged back by Colback. I mean, again, he's brought to the ground. The referee, what's he looking at? He's waving his arms all over. Billing was on the deck. Forrest have got it with Spence well, on the far a, side. That's a free kick, no, I can't believe that. <laughs> he's now given the free kick to Forrest. Well, again, we saw from here, he had a fistful of Billing shirt. The assistant referee's got the same view that we see, he, I can't believe he just he hasn't given that. Billing's gone through three of them. Sometimes referees can try and be too clever, can't they? And try and play too much clever advantage. Just give fouls that are fouls sometimes, for either team. 11 minutes to play. Bournemouth nil, nodding on Forrest nil. Still, one moment, one slip, one misplaced pass. One bit of brilliance could decide this, could send Bournemouth back to the Premier League or could put Nottingham Forest into position two. Here's Keeper Moore down the right now, chasing on with Ryan Christie. That might be a free kick. 
Keeper Moore, oh, he's got away with it. Keeper Moore, right side of the penalty here in the challenge with McKenna. Whips one in, Keeper Moore into the side netting again, unfortunately. Well, that again looked a push by Keeper Moore on McKenna. Well, it looked a foul to me, but I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> Maybe we're playing no fouls. Maybe that's one of the new rules. To get promoted to the Premier League, we're going to play a game of no fouls for either team. Into the last ten, nearly. Three seconds to go. Forrest have wasted possession on the far side. And it will be a Bournemouth throw in just over the halfway line. On that far left touchline as Cherry's attack from left to right. An energy gel comes on for Jaden Anthony, chucked on by the Cherry's sports science team. He swigs that sugar for a bit of lasting energy for these closing minutes. Zamora is throwing down the left-hand side. That's going to run all the way through for a Forest goal kick if Steve Cook can let it, which he does. Yeah, they look like they've gone into a bit of a defensive mode at the moment to me, Forrest. They're even thinking the point wouldn't be a bad situation out of this. Well, we know what a point would do. It would send the games on Saturday into decisive mode. Bournemouth would go in with a three-point advantage, as they have now. Forrest would have a goal difference of better than one goal. So a draw for the Cherries against Millwall would do enough. A defeat for the Cherries would be fine if Forrest also lost. Can the Cherries, though, seal it tonight? It's what everybody here has come for. Nine minutes to play. Over on the left, Christie waiting on the edge of the penalty area. Here's Jordan Zamora going past two. What a run from Zamora! as Zamora slalomed his way in to the penalty area. Yellow card for McKenna, because Zamora's running at speed. Another pace, Willow, and that might have been a penalty. Well, Zamora's asking for the penalty, is it? We're just having another look again. Yeah, just outside the box. Referee's got it right. So, a yellow card for Scott McKenna of Forrest, and now a free-kick situation for the Cherries. A pace outside the penalty area, almost dead centre. Yeah, I always think you've got to go through with, with power for this one. It's too close to get it up and up and down quickly. Just aim it. Well, there's going to be a gap so the, the keeper can see through it. Just smash it through the gap. A hush almost descends across the Vitality Stadium. Descends across Bournemouth. And probably descends across Nottingham as well. As Phil Billing stands over this free kick for Bournemouth. A yard outside the penalty area as we look away to our right. Forrest have got about an eight-man wall. Ryan Christie's there too as the decoy. But Phil Billing, who scored two on Saturday, has got an opportunity here from the set play. Billing, left-footed, it's a cheeky one. Square! And smashed in! strike by Moore he had, to, oh yeah, he had to hit the target that was the main thing from that angle but what a <laughs> what a time this lad is having at Bournemouth two goals in the first game he comes on the sub and he could win his promotion there's all sorts of substitutes getting ready to come on for down there and Forrest unbelievable stuff have you ever seen a more important and yet a more simple trading ground set piece than that one? A sideways pass, a first-time finish into the bottom right-hand corner from Kiefer Moore. Super sub. Yeah, I mean, it looks simple when you just, you just play it through, but that's no mean feat to get it on target right in the bottom corner by Moore. It was absolutely fantastic strike. Now, for six minutes plus injury time six minutes to see through Forrest are making their full raft of free changes here Colbacks come off and uh, Richie Larrier the Canadian has come on also on is Alex Mighton on the left hand side who's come on for Steve Cook and I think Zinkenagel went off as well didn't he I think I saw him disappearing down the, uh, the tunnel it all happened in the aftermath of the goal so we weren't really watching that so Zinkenagel is off as well uh, we'll try and work out the third and final sub, but to be honest with you, for Bournemouth it's going to be seeing out this last five and a half minutes. 
Yeah, we are the coming. Fans, yeah, the, the fans know it, but we've got to just concentrate and see it through. 646 days ago, Bournemouth lost their Premier League status. They are five minutes away from regaining it. The ball is back with Forrest, halfway inside their own half. Well, it had just got a little bit nervy, Willow. There was such an expectant hush before that free kick. But Billing knocked it sideways. Moore knocked it into the net. And now the ball is with Lewis Cook in the centre of midfield. The Cherries are still pinging it around here. On halfway as Forrest chase around, try and get the ball back. Can Bournemouth keep their 20th clean sheet of the season and see this one out? Moore has it on the halfway line. Well, Kiefer Moore is watched on frustratingly, injured, broken foot, surgery. Back ahead of schedule to score two at Swansea. This time last week, Willow. Well, it was amazing, wasn't it? You know, for him to come on and do that. And to do it again is absolutely astonishing. I know it, it all looks simple the way it evolved, but he's kept the ball down so well and right into the corner. What a fantastic strike. Terry's have got it down in the corner flag at the moment, exactly where they want it. Dominic Solanke is protecting the ball. The giant scoreboard away to our right says 86 minutes nearly played as Forrest get the ball down and drive it long up the field towards the substitute on this near side. Mighton, one of their youngsters who scored on Saturday, and that's out of play. Jaden and Anthony cannons it off the Forest man, and it's a Cherries free uh, throw in on the halfway line. And we're going to see another change for the Cherries here, I think. Two changes, I think Sariki Dembele is coming on. Oh, sorry, it's not. I'm trying to look under the... Uh, it's Ben Pearson and Chris Meckham, so the, the defensive special team will always coming on. Yeah, they are. And he wants to do the changes now, but the referee wants him to play on. Adam Smith on the halfway line takes the throw in down this near side. All sorts of people are moving around the stand now all of a sudden. All sorts of TV folk are getting themselves in position. We'll have the reaction for you if it stays as it is. And Bournemouth are on the way to the Premier League in three minutes and stoppage time from now. Anthony with the challenge. Sliding one came in from Ghana. Moore to the right-hand side. Here's Jaden Anthony again. A second one decides it. Anthony into the penalty area. Might run loose. Cherries can't get there with Solanke. And hammered clear for Forrest by Spence. It's still back with Bournemouth. Keeper Moore on this near side again. Christie back to halfway. There are four yellow shirts around him. This is not the time for Bournemouth to be taking any chances. Forward down the right side, and it's out of play off a Forest man, I think, for a Cherry's throw. Forest Furious down in front of us. Yeah, just take your time with this one. Just a bit of game management now. They're going absolutely crazy trying to get the ball thrown in, but just take the sting out of it. The remnants of a red flare lingering in the sky as we look away, causing a red mist in front of the north stand as we now wait for these two cherry substitutions. Steve Cooper, the Forest manager, urging his team on with applause down there. But Bournemouth are two and a half minutes away. It's going to be Ryan Christie coming off yeah. for Ben Pearson. And Mepham. He goes to three at the back, I think. So Christie coming off. And also Jaden Anthony will be replaced by Chris Meffin for these final couple of minutes. Yeah, I'm just wondering if we will go into the trio or will he keep the same shape? He's done it in that way before. Uh, Richie Luria, the Forest midfielder there, was just urging Jaden Anthony to be walking towards the technical area rather than the other side of the ground when his number went up. Well, listen to the Vitality Stadium. Even those in the executive seats to our left who've had a nice posh dinner, probably a couple of glasses or something pre-match. They're standing up and chanting, we are going up. There are 90 seconds left of the 90 minutes. DME. On BBC Radio Solo. in the corner. Cherries lead by a goal to nil. The scorer, Kiefer Moore, his third goal in two Tuesday nights, coming off the bench. And here he is again now, as he's brought down by, yes he is, by Laria, just outside the penalty area. Free kick to the Cherries, and that might be another minute used up. Yeah, it was good work by Moore. He's just got away with a tackle from behind, but the second one took him down. So, free kicks to the Cherries, and predictably enough, nobody is moving to take it here. Just go in the corner with it. Ben Pearson with his newly slicked back hair, courtesy not of some expensive styling product, but a bottle of Highland Spring water. Stands over the ball, 30 yards out. 
The fourth official, Josh Smith, is coming forward with the board in 45 seconds to tell us how much time will be added on. Stay with us for all the live reaction here on BBC Radio Solo. We're on air till 10. So much time to speak to the key protagonists as Pearson and the Cherries have it inside the forest half. It's going to run to the right side of the forest box, cleared away by Mighton, but out of play and a Bournemouth throwing down underneath us. 30 seconds of the 90 minutes to play. 1 0 Bournemouth. Well, as we're going to these dying moments, it's been absolutely amazing. This, the way this team have consistently, now towards the end of the season, picked up results against teams every time they need, need them. Out of playoff filling, it will be a Forest goal kick away to our right. Here comes the magic board with the added time on it from fourth official Josh Smith. It says eight minutes. I saw it. I thought it said three. Well, then I squinted and it actually said eight. It's not what the Cherries wanted to see. No, Forest not. have staged some late shows already this season. Bournemouth have now got a fairly significant chunk of time to see out. There have been a lot of stoppages, in fairness. But now Keeper Moore has it, and Dom Solanke might be away here. Solanke up against Spence, who holds him up and then drags him down, and that'll be a free kick outside the penalty area. He's last man. It'll be a yellow card for Spence as well. There were two defenders covering behind. Spence yellow, Solanke free kick. But that was nearly Solanke away. Spence, to his credit, there stuck with Solanke gamely, and then illegally. Well, he's so strong, Solanke. It's great to. Yeah, he's hooked up with him, he's pulled him over, no doubt about that. So Cherries have a free kick, which uh, they've sent a total of no bodies forward for, Willow. What's happening? Well, I think they're just going to run it into the corner like you would expect. <laughs> they've got a free kick, Willow. 30, it's a Bournemouth free kick, isn't it? Yeah. They've got a free kick, 30 yards out. They've got five men in their own half. They've got nobody in advance of the ball. <laughs> this is strange. They're just going to flick it, looking for Kiefer Moore to put himself between the ball and the Forest defenders. This is the strangest Hang on, attacking... here's another one. Go, here's Dom going <laughs> Strangest attacking set piece I've ever seen. Leading by a goal to nil. One and a half of the eight minutes of added time have been played. And whatever they were trying to do there, it's completely gone pear-shaped. And it's back to the Forest keeper and they get a chance to play it long. Well, they do. I thought they could have at least tried to keep some possession in that corner. Well... They've just said, come on then, Forrest, we're going to line up with five in a line and three, four in front of that. Leave Kiefer Moore up top and see if you can unlock us. And Forrest are going to try and do that with a direct ball down the middle. First touch is a good one from Chris Mepham in the air. Looping around on the edge of the Cherries penalty here at the moment. Mepham and then Billing clear. And Kiefer Moore tries to flick it sideways. Really needs to get it under control. And then a nice ball down the right-hand side from the Cherries, but no one really there, but it was a... A clever ball from Adam Smith just to turn Forrest around back well, in the Well, it was, half. and I thought if Phil Bill had started his runoff quicker, I think he could have gone on the end of that. 1-0 Bournemouth. Promotion to the Premier League is still six minutes of added time away here on BBC Radio Solent. And Forrest on the move, but it's given away by Spence. And now Kiefer Moore with Billing in the middle in oceans of space. Kiefer Moore's found him. Billing's running on empty, I think. Can barely get his, pick his legs up to move forward. Manages to keep the ball alive, though, for the Cherries. Over to the left-hand side and Solange who will happily hold it up by the corner flag, Willow, with no one making any move to go and support him. Is that no. a goal, goal, goal kick. kick. Goal kick. Got to face this one now. Tick off those minutes one by one, listening at home. You probably started your own watch. That is three of the eight gone. Bournemouth lead by Kiefer Moore's goal on 83 minutes, slotting home a training ground free kick beyond Bree Samba. Phillips wins a giant header inside the Cherries half of the field as it comes forward. Then Lewis Cook won another one, but Garner knocks it forward now. Forrest to the right-hand side from Joe Lolly. Right corner of the penalty. Brennan Johnson slides in. The flag is up. There's a huge miss in there. Is that? It's uh, over the bar, I think, from Yates, is it? Right in the middle there. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The flag was up, Willow. Yeah, that seen, was as soon as I seen the flag went up, I relaxed. I knew the shot didn't matter. But we could have done without it, though, couldn't we? I'm not sure who's got the ultimate shot in there, Willow, as it came through. It doesn't really matter. Keisha Moore wins the man of the match award, Willow. Of course he does. He came on on 59 minutes. He scored after 83. Tuesday nights a Keisha Moore night in AFC Bournemouth shirts. Well, what a start to his Bournemouth career. Yeah. Bad injury to start with, and then he's come on in the last two games and done absolutely magnificent. So, the ball launched forward by the Cherries, down the field, looking for that man, Kiefer Moore, once again, battling away for it down this near side. It's a forest throw. Four of the eight minutes have been played. 
Bournemouth four minutes away. A Cherries fan in the front row, very sportingly, throws the ball back to Forrest pretty quickly. Cherries fans are chanting, we are going up, but there's still an element of tension in that song. They know that Forrest are still throwing absolutely everything at it now. It is kitchen sink time as Kiefer Moore tried to flick it behind him to Solanke on the halfway line. Bit of a slip from Mighton, and suddenly Cherries are coming forward here with Ben Pearson. Down this right-hand side, Pearson heading for the corner flag, and again, probably the right thing to do there, with no one really making any effort to get up with him, and Pearson will try and hold it up, and it's a Forrest throw by the corner flag. Pearson's arguing with the lines. Well, he's get here, back. Yeah, get back. They always <laughs> give the ball to the attacking team when they sort of situation. Message from Willow, Ben. Get back. Which is exactly what he's doing now. Head down, arms pumping, getting himself back into the centre of midfield. Forrester got it again now. Coming forward over halfway. We've played five of the eight minutes to be added on. Cherry's ticking them off. The fans ticking them off. In comes the ball from the right-hand side for Forrest. Travers is there with an important tip. And there's another flag up there. Offside against Forrest. Mark Travers punches the air in celebration as they ping another ball into the box forest and the linesman with a yellow flag on the far side. Yeah, he did, but uh, Travers, he did magnificent because he wasn't to know the flag was going to go up and he's just clipped it away from, yeah, just offside. Just about offside. It was an important tip from Travers at the back post, as you say. All the reaction to come, let's hear from you, at Solon Sports on Twitter, 8133 on text. And of course, via WhatsApp, 08000 321 3. Mark Travers takes the yellow card for time wasting. Two minutes of the eight to play. What a Tuesday night on BBC Radio Solon. Absolutely it's amazing. By a goal to nil still. The three points that will take them back to the Premier League after two seasons away. Travers right footed ball down the field on this near side. Sails out of play over the head of Billing. Another ball appears very quickly on this near side from the fourth official. And it's back to Brees Samba, the goalkeeper. Well, even though they've been offside, Forrest have put a couple of threatening balls into the Bournemouth penalty area with their last couple of attacks. As Samba's ball to the left, that goes straight out, I think. Cherry's throwing, halfway inside their own half. Have you ever seen more people in the technical area, Willow, than in Bournemouth right now? <laughs> there's subs down there, there's backroom members of staff, there's camera folk. Steve Fletcher's probably in there somewhere, I would imagine. And we've still got... Still a minute and 20 seconds of the added time to play. We're going to try and get down on the pitch and bring your reaction from the players out on the field very shortly indeed. Scott Parker, all the key protagonists will talk to us here on BBC Radio Solent. One nil it remains. And we are officially now into the eighth and final minute of added time with Bournemouth having a throw in inside their own half. Some members of the constabulary and stewards start to line in front of the supporters to try and prevent a pitch invasion, but Forrest will have one last attempt here to launch the ball forward. Down the right-hand side, Jed Spence, Solanke pulls him back, free kick. Solanke will get a yellow card for that over on the far side. And Forrest now, Willow, one chance, yep. the keeper's going to take it, one chance to launch it forward with 30 seconds left. Ball hands to the deck here, we've got to get this away. So fans down in front of us lining the advertising hoardings still they wait but now they're going to have to wait with a bit of tension because this is the last play of the game if Bournemouth defend this successfully they're into the Premier League it's been taken inside right channel Cherries have been caught out Travers saves the day at the near post and a defensive challenge in there as well it's gone behind for a forest corner Jordan Zamora Lloyd Kelly Travers they were all in there the goalkeeper's going up Willow forest corner time up last play there we go got to hang on here Forest corner from the right-hand side to try and deny Bournemouth a place in the Premier League this evening. Here it comes, right-footed from the far side. Terrible corner, headed away at the near post. Straight back out to the corner taker. Driven in again. The goalkeeper splits it past the post. And the referee blows the whistle. It's time for the red flag to fly high once again in the Premier League. Two years away. Time. The Bournemouth boys are back in town. Absolutely amazing. The pitch completely covered. The supporters now. Play goes off. Everybody is so happy. What a sight. As we look down to the pitch, almost centrally, there is a red flare being held aloft by the Cherry supporters. The players engulfed. I think some of them made their way down the tunnel. It's all very friendly. A real cluster.
cluster of Cherry supporters around the centre circle. Forest supporters applaud their players. Most of their players have made it way down the tunnel. But Willow, we knew it was going to be a titanic tussle this evening. We knew it was going to be open. We probably knew there weren't going to be too many goals in it. One moment to decide it, and it was a training ground free. Yes, it was. It was a fantastically worked goal. They made it look so simple. But when, when it got to more, I thought, just keep it down. And he managed to do all that. Steer it away from the goalkeeper into the bottom left-hand corner. What a set play that is. Absolutely amazing. Well, scenes like this in 2015 when the Cherries beat Bolton. Back then it was new territory, new ground for this club. They'd never been in the Premier League. Scott Parker, at the first time of asking, having come in in the summer, has done exactly what he did at Fulham. His first full season at Fulham, he won promotion to the Premier League. His first season at Bournemouth, he's done exactly the same. And yeah. Willow, Jurgen Klopp, Pep Guardiola, look out, the Cherries are back. <laughs> we are back and it'll be great to see in the in the, uh, the Premiership again. At this, it's, it's an absolutely amazing scene to see all the fans on the pitch. Some of the players are still out there. I think they're buried in there, but I imagine they'll make their way to the for the dugout soon. Cherries fans all over the pitch. Chant, we are going up, we are going up. We want to hear what you've got to say about it at Solon Sports. You can WhatsApp us 08000 321 treble three. Keep him all, he'd probably be head and shoulders above everybody else. If they could lift him up, Willow, I if think, he wasn't the size of a house, I they'd think be lifting he was, him up. I think he was one of the early ones. I've seen <laughs> go down the tunnel, to be quite honest. He got so, away with it. Sariki Dembele could be anywhere, so could Jordan Zamora. Ryan Christie's just walking down the touchline to our right here to try and find some of his friends and family in the crowd. The pitch will be cleared shortly. The Cherries will have champagne. They will have a celebration board. We will get down there amongst it as well. We'll hand you, we'll hand you over to Jordan right about now. But it is job done. Bournemouth back in the Premier League. They've beaten Nottingham Forest by a goal to nil. Chris Willow, thank you very much. Uh, unbelievable scenes down in front of us here at Vitality Stadium. The pitch completely covered with Cherry supporters. As Chris Temple said, the players could be absolutely anywhere in there. I'm sure we will see a few hoisted onto the shoulders of the fans any moment now they are enjoying this moment and who can blame them after two years away Bournemouth back in the Premier League and some of your messages as well enjoying this moment listening back at home or wherever you are not able to be here inside Vitality Stadium this evening Ellie says frazzle euphoric so happy Alan's been in touch from Chepstow as well. He says, well done to the Cherries. Incredible stuff. Oh, my goodness, says Brandon. At Solon Sport on Twitter, 08000 321 3 is the WhatsApp number. Starting your WhatsApp messages with the word Solon, or you can text 81333. We're on the air through until 10 o'clock this evening. These celebrations will continue, I'm sure, long into the night. Chris Temple is making his way down to the touchline now to try and grab us some reaction. Just seen Jaden Anthony emerge from the crowd away to our right-hand side. He's now trying to wrestle his way back into the dressing room. And I tell you what, let's just remind ourselves how Bournemouth did it this evening. They're heading back to the Premier League.